What's up everyone, Matthew Monis here, and today I'm reviewing the Acer V-Nitro. This is the black edition, which means we finally have a gaming laptop that doesn't look like your traditional gaming laptop. So none of that red and black theming you're used to seeing. Just a black but elegant looking laptop that doesn't look like it got impregnated by an angry alien. So is the Acer V-Nitro as good as it looks? Let's find out. I totally dig the design of the Acer V-Nitro. It's all black with the top lid covered in a soft plastic touch material that's made with nano imprint lithography. Basically, this is just fancy talk for this pattern that's been imprinted on the top. It feels nice and if you scratch the surface, it makes a cool noise, similar to the binders I used to use way back in high school. It's a wide laptop, wider than Acer's Predator 15, but it's much thinner and only weighs 5.51 pounds. I'd say it's light enough to travel with, but too heavy to carry for long periods of time. Port selection is good with two USB 2.0 ports on the left, a couple of audio jacks and an SD card slot. The right has a power connector, gigabit ethernet jack, HDMI port, two USB 3.0 ports with one being able to provide power when off and a USB type C Thunderbolt 3 port. So opening it up was super easy and all the typical stuff is upgradable. So two slots for your RAM capable of holding up to 32 gigabytes, one M2 PCIe SSD slot. Now this unit has a 256 gigabyte SSD inside. So at average read speeds of 550 and write speeds of 520 but you can swap it out for a faster NVMe SSD if you want. There's a 2.5 inch, one terabyte, 5400 RPM hard drive, and an average read speeds of 130 and write speeds of 120. Now, there's not too many models to choose from. You either get the 15 inch version or opt for the bigger 17 inch version with Tobii eye tracking. My unit has the following specs, and the only difference between mine and the others available are the hard drive configurations. This unit retails for $1,300, but pricing starts at $1250 if you get it with one less storage drive. The display is 15.6 inches, full HD and matte, but I think my unit has a defect. Every time I move the screen to certain positions, the display shuts off until I move it again. Besides that, the colors are pretty good. It's not 100% color accurate, but good enough to get by for video editing. Contrast is good too with colors looking nice and vibrant, which was great for games and watching movies. Now, the only other complaint I have is there's a bit too much screen flex. As you can see here, the monitor completely shuts itself off and only comes on again when I fiddle with it. Just above is the HD webcam, and it looks like this. I mean, it's the same as every other gaming laptop, so more than fine for streaming games or using Skype. The keyboard is full size with a numeric keypad. There's very little keyboard flex, and the keys themselves have a travel distance of 1.6 millimeters. They're comfortable to type and game on, but I did find them to be a tad mushy. There's one level of backlighting, it's red, but it's not overbearing like on other gaming laptops. Now, just below is a precision touchpad, and it's surrounded by a metal deck. The touchpad itself is plastic, it's fine. It's not the best, but it's not terrible either. But I do love the fact they included a fingerprint scanner that can be used with Windows Hello. I think every single laptop should have one. It's just so much easier to log into your computer using your finger than it is typing in a password. Sound is tuned by Dolby Audio with two speakers placed below the laptop. You can change the way it sounds under the Dolby app, but I found the music and game settings to sound the best. Overall, the sound quality is good. It gets loud with decent highs, good mids, and there's even some bass. Now, let's talk about performance, and this is where things started to fall south for the V Nitro. Not because it couldn't handle playing games, it did that quite well. Gaming at 1080p with settings set to high is the sweet spot for this laptop. But the problem I had was with overheating, and I mean really bad overheating. I fired up Overwatch, a very well optimized and not so demanding game, and the computer got so hot that I couldn't even touch the keyboard. It reached temperatures of 55 degrees Celsius, sometimes hitting 58. That's 133 degrees Fahrenheit, making this one of the hottest computers I've tested this year. Even at idle, the CPU temperatures would sit around 63 degrees, which is much too hot. Now, as you can expect, there was lots of thermal throttling happening with the CPU temperatures sitting in the 90s. I also tried Doom. The frame rates were great, averaging around 100 frames per second. But again, the computer was just getting too hot to use. 
Now, in all honesty, I'm quite surprised. Acer's gaming line has been some of the best cool laptops I've tested. It's possible they tried to cram too much into such a thin frame, especially when you compare it to the thicker Acer Predator 15. Now, I have read reports of some nitric units having this issue and that thermal paste wasn't applied properly. I'm going to request another review unit and see if it also has the same issue. Keep an eye out on my description or a pinned comment for a future update. Last up was battery life. I averaged around 7 hours. This consisted of browsing the web and watching movies. Gaming only got me about 2 hours until I needed to charge. Alright, so here's my closing thoughts. The Acer V Nitro 15 has a lot going for it. A thin design, a sleek all black look, good sound, a good screen, great performance and room to upgrade. However, the biggest complaint I have is the excessive overheating. It stays hot when the CPU is idling and gets uncomfortably hot when gaming. Again, it's quite possible that my review unit has a defect, but until I can test out another review unit, I can't recommend this laptop at this time. It's too bad because it has everything going for it. So that wraps up my review of the Acer V Nitro 15. If you have this laptop already, let me know if you have the same issue with overheating heating in the comments below. Also make sure to stay subscribed so you can see that future update regarding this laptop. Thanks again for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button and I will see everybody in the next video.